organic compounds are often found to have branches or what we call alkyl groups that are attached to the main carbon chain and there is a naming convention for how we name those branches or once again alkyl groups. Our first step remains the same and that is to identify the longest carbon chain possible in that molecule. So for this example over here our longest carbon chain is one, two, three, four carbons which means that it gets the prefix but. We can see that it contains only single bonds and therefore is an alkane and gets the suffix ane butane and now what we can see is that there is a single carbon that is attached to that main chain and so that single carbon gets the same prefix that a single carbon chain would get but now because it is a branch it gets the suffix yl so this would then be called methyl butane and that is all one word what is once again important is to indicate the position of that branch and we always count from the side that makes that number as small as possible. So if this is carbon number one, then this would be 2-methylbutane. The same principle can be applied to longer molecules and multiple chains where our first step once again is going to be to identify the longest carbon chain where here we can see that our longest carbon chain is made up of six carbons. Note here that this branch at the end is not a branch because it is on the first or on the last carbon and as a result forms a continuous chain that is six carbons long. We know that six carbons gets the prefix hex and since it is an alkane with only single bonds we would call that hexane. Then what we can see is we can see there are two separate branches. One branch that has only a single carbon that we would know is a methyl group and another branch that has two carbons which makes it an ethyl group. These groups must always be arranged alphabetically so we can see here that alphabetically the ethyl group comes before the methyl group and we must number them as 2-methyl, 3-ethyl and so the IUPAC name for this compound is then 3-ethyl, 2-methyl hexane that is all one word. We can do the same thing where we remember that the halogen branches are also considered branches and are therefore of equal importance. So once again we identify our longest carbon chain that here is seven carbons and therefore we are dealing with a heptane molecule where we can now see that we have two methyl branches, a fluoro branch and an ethyl branch. And once again we arrange these alphabetically. Alphabetically the ethyl branch would come first and that would be a 4-ethyl because it is on the fourth carbon. There are two methyl branches, both of those on the second carbon. And just like we did for the halogens, in, when there are two of them, we would use the prefix di. So we are going to have dimethyl here and then a fluoro branch on the third carbon which makes the IUPAC name for this molecule 4-ethyl-3-fluoro-2,2-dimethylheptane. Important to note here that even though they are both on the second carbon, it is still necessary to list the number 2 twice and to indicate that with a di. Another important thing to note is that we still, when arranging them alphabetically, we still look at the M in methyl. We do not think that this is a D which should become before E. We always look at the prefix that is a result of the number of carbons in that chain. The last thing to note here is that in the condensed structural formula, branches are written in brackets. So this molecule here would be CH3 followed by a CH, followed by a CH3 branch, which is in brackets, followed by another carbon that is attached to a single hydrogen, followed by a branch that is a CH2 molecule, followed by a CH3, and then a CH2 molecule, another CH2 molecule, and a CH3 to end that. So branches in condensed structural formula are written in brackets.